come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, welcome back, or thanks for your first visit to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review podcast that happens every Saturday night right here on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google, Google, Google Play. Good to play. Google Play. Google to play. Good to play. <laughs> And many more fine uh, internet uh, podcast repositories. Um, so you can also find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight's movie was chosen by... Holly. Me. Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched Slither. Can you tell us what year Slither comes at us from? 2006. And who is the brain behind Slither? Senior James Gunn. This was his first movie? It was his first... Uh, yeah. yeah, it was his first directorial movie. Okay, well that's kind of impressive, I guess, for a movie with yeah. this budget. Unfortunately, yeah. it was graded by total viewer apathy in the year 2006 when it came out. I remember seeing it in a yes. theater with like five other people. Well received uh, by critics, by uh, people in the horror world, but not so much for uh, moviegoers. General audiences were like, yeah. mm, no. Well, we had a slither virgin here tonight. We did. <laughs> Ew. That's a really <laughs> icky way of putting it. Uh, it slither makes it a, that's a, that's, it's a especially gross. There are two yeah. words that are not... They don't taste good together. How did it feel, Sean? <laughs> slimy. slimy. <laughs> Very slimy. Uh, how come, as a horror fan, how come you hadn't seen this movie before? Um, I guess uh, everything I saw about it made it look maybe goofier than uh, it actually ended up being. And it's really? The kind of, well, I think so. And it's the kind of movie, I think I was telling Colin this, like... It's the kind of movie I see, like uh, Night of the Creeps. Like, I see it; it looks interesting, but I'm not gonna sit down and watch this movie unless someone's like, "Hey, let's let's watch this movie." Mm -hmm. it's like, it's not something I'm just like eager to go. Is it watch one of those where you're just like, "Yeah, I'll get to it." Yeah, it's like, yeah, right, yeah, it's cool. I'll watch it. I'm not opposed yeah. to watching it. I just never was like, it's never top of the list of like, "Hey, I want to watch Slither." Right, just, you like, don't like never. actively go out and seek it. Yeah, yeah it's just n never something I was just going towards. Mm -hmm. You're not the type of person who sees like, here's a major Hollywood studio movie. Directed by the guy who wrote Dawn of the Dead, one of my favorite remakes of the past couple, with a bunch of practical makeup effects, outer space monsters, slimy shit going on. You know, like, I mean, when you say all those words, <laughs> it, it's interesting <laughs> it that you like say something. you thought it was goofier than it would be because the original marketing for this movie was playing it as a straight horror film, and there was no comedy in any of the trailers or anything. Yeah. That's what I put hundred percent put the fail the failure of marketing and financial failure of this movie on Absolutely. the marketing department. It is one hundred percent the marketing did department's not fault. Go into this movie thinking horror comedy. I hated they, this movie the first know. time I saw yeah. it because I thought it was supposed to be a serious movie. Yeah. I didn't know it was supposed to be horror comedy because that's how like the trailer is built all around the bathtub scene, and that is like all you really see in the trailer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they play it so dramatically and so intense and that's not this movie like i don't know what i saw or i mean it, it i'm curious if it's horror. something you saw later on because you know I later mean, yeah, on the perceptions I'm, changed i'm this sure movie. i saw something like way after this came out <laughs> but also horror comedy is not my horror comedy is the thing i'm just like oh it could be cool but yeah. i'm not just gonna seek it out because mm -hmm. you know horror comedy to me is like it's hit or miss yeah like it could be good it could not be good it depends on mm -hmm. who's behind it and everything and i'm just like meh all mm -hmm. right yeah i'll and, see it and honestly i don't think there was a lot i was Telling Michaela, I don't think there was a lot of effort into into hyping this movie up at all. Mm -mm. I mean, I saw one trailer for yeah. it. That was it. I think they were stuck with a movie that they couldn't figure out how to market. I mm -hmm. mean, it's like, yeah. do you market it as a horror movie or as a comedy? I'm sure there were multiple trailers probably tested, you know, probably. internally, mm -hmm. and they said, well. This is the one that tests the best that makes it look like a straight up horror movie. Yeah. But apparently, people in 2006 weren't interested in 
uh, you know, slug monsters from outer space and, you know, a bunch I mean, of... maybe if they just called it slug monsters from outer space, you'd be like, <laughs> right, but I feel like that, tra- awesome. I feel like that trailer is just straight up lying and a total misrepresentation of this movie though. Like there's a difference between like testing your markets and finding what works to sell the movie and just straight up lying, mm. you know, yeah. and, and even movies in 2017 and 2016 are, are having that kind of problem too. Like how many movies did we see last year that like there were scenes in the trailer that weren't even in the movie? Like oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's Robo. an ongoing yeah, it's an ongoing problem. But yeah, you got you, you definitely get a point where you're not just catering to your audience and you're just straight up lying. And that yeah. this, to me, this trailer totally crossed into that like, territory. I yeah, I wouldn't market this to a Saw audience. I'd market it to no. a Shaun of the Dead audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, you were Shaun of the Dead. It's like a four. Oh, four. Well, I was trying to figure yeah. out what, what yeah. was the what was But that was one didn't do well here. 2006. Uh, like, this was a terrible year for horror movies. Yeah. I looked it up, and we were like in the middle of Saw, and uh, Black Christmas remake came out this year. It okay. was not a good yeah. time for horror movies in 2006. Mm. Well, it was good as far as there were horror movies all the time. But they were all poorly good, received. Right? There wasn't very good ones. You right. already passed over the, I guess, you know, the peak seems to be like, you know, there was remake fa- fever. Then there yep. was the the Japanese remake f- Fever oh. and the torture uh, movies. Mm-hmm. That yeah. seemed to be like the three main uh, you know genres subgenres that what were hitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went through a lot of Japanese movies. Didn't yeah. We? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in a very yeah. short amount of yeah. time. Oh my yeah, God. They're like, yeah. Oh, you liked The Ring? Let's do everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have five Grudge movies for you to watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not to mention what Shutter. Pulse and uh, yeah, yeah. Shutter and uh, oh, geez, what was the yeah. one, one missed with, call? One missed oh, call. Yeah, shit. yeah. There was also when was the uh, the the babysitter and the calls are coming from inside the one? Is that one missed call? <laughs> <laughs> shit, I just I think I just there was uh, when a stranger calls. <laughs> when a stranger that, calls. Yeah. Oh, the remake. Yeah, the, the remake. remake. Yeah, yeah. yeah when a stranger right. calls. Yeah. yeah. There was yeah. also like wasn't there a sorority row remake? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They remade like yeah everything prom night like, like everything came back. I wasn't interested at that point. I'm just like eh, it wasn't a big time for horror movies for me. I guess. Well, for um, any, anybody apparently. But this was also like I mean I Slither seems to be a movie that's made by a diehard horror movie aficionado, right? Oh, like, so, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This guy knows his stuff because there's so many in jokes uh, to old old horror movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, like yeah. you know the store names. I mean, there's uh, there's, 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 there's the funeral time. home. Did you guys know the name of the funeral home was? It Max Renz? No, that no, was R.J. Renz. McCready. It was funeral mm-hmm. home. No, it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Max Renz video store, I think, mm-hmm. or something like that. And Frank mm-hmm. Henlotter's, you know, whatever, the bar. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, was yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And there was, and um, it was even little, like, uh, Rob Zombie was the voice of the doctor. Mm-hmm. And Lloyd Kaufman Lloyd was Kaufman the Lloyd Kaufman was the vagrant. drunk. Because you know, I yeah. think Lloyd Kaufman had given James Gunn his first uh, job, right? Yeah, he, he started. Romeo and he's, Juliet yeah. or something? He started in the, the yeah, Troma yeah. Studios, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it Tromeo and Julia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he's repaying right. the favor with There's his even first... a trauma movie on in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Toxic, Toxic Avenger yeah. makes, uh, <laughs> makes an appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, it, so the movie is a uh, like a throwback to 80s era fun horror movies, mm-hmm. right? Maybe this is why it was like ill received at the time. Everybody wanted something a lot more serious. Yeah. They wanted the uh, the torture movies. They wanted the you know the the so brutality of like Hills point. Have Eyes and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. and, mm-hmm. or the spookiness of the uh, the uh, Japanese movies. But this is like, I mean, the closest analogy I guess that you know springs to my mind is Night of the Creeps, a movie that we covered before. You should go listen mm-hmm. to that uh, uh, episode, just because it has you know. Slug things. From there's a lot space. of slither talk yes. in that episode too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. mm-hmm. But there's also that bathtub scene. That's a callback to David Cronenberg's Shivers. You mm-hmm. know. I mean, like so. Yeah. And, and even those movies in the '80s were, you know, a callback to movies from the '50s. So this is like a '50s era movie, right? Absolutely. The, mm-hmm. yeah. the small town, like the Blob or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Small town invaded by aliens from outer space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the wrinkle that's put on this is this. Uh, Pretty endearing little love story between <laughs> Grant Grant, played by the great Michael Rooker, yes, and uh, Stella Grant, played by Elizabeth Starla. May. Thanks. Starla, mm-hmm. sorry, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Starla, mm-hmm. Starla, mm-hmm. lovely Elizabeth Banks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Before she went on to the Hunger Games, and she's a director now, right? She directed yeah. one of the Pitch Perfect, Pitch Perfect mm-hmm. two, movies, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think she wrote both of them, didn't she? No, she didn't. Pitch no. Perfect. She directed both of them? She directed the second one. 
and she's in. All and she's three. in all three. Of them. Oh, I know she's in them. But yeah. I thought she I directed. Thought she both wrote them. or no, something. She directed the second one. She had a good run on Thirty Rock too. Yeah, she did. Mm-hmm. she's done well for herself. Mm-hmm. I like that they cast her. I know James Gunn wanted someone who was um, the way he put it, like uh, a Hitchcock heroine. Like he was. Uh, he wanted his he tippy was, headron. He wanted his tippy headron, mm-hmm. and she does have that classic beautiful look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she works well for that part. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's got that that, that blonde mm-hmm. classic that look. That cloth, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And the other major character in this uh, love triangle is uh, Nathan Fillion. Nathan mm-hmm. Fillion. Who had a Everybody lot of goodwill, I think, at this time, right? In, at least in cult circle, you know, cult yeah. fandom. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, For sure. Firefly. For Firefly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And Dr. Horrible and mm-hmm. the stuff he did with Joss yeah. Whedon. And then, so this is like, is was this his first? No, Serenity had been before that. Yeah. Ser- yeah, Serenity, right? Serenity, that was yeah. The name of it? Yeah. Yep. That was prior to this. Mm-hmm. So this was maybe his second movie as lead. Mm-hmm. This Probably. is the, the yeah. moment that he's going to break out, right? Because Slither is going to be such a gigantic hit that it's going to make his career. <laughs> oh, 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 thank God Castle came around. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. God. Because, <laughs> I mean. boy, was I tired of just Nathan Fillion until Castle came around. <laughs> I thought Nathan Fillion was going to be like the new generation's, uh, like uh, uh, Bruce Campbell, uh, right? He kind of had that kind of. Cult, I wish, right? But <laughs> I like wish. at the time, because it seemed like he was being, he was in all of these things that were, you know, really popular amongst that. You he's, know. Yeah, he's a cult favorite for sure. Yeah, yeah. So much so, everyone's like, cast Nathan Fillion in whatever movie's coming out. Oh, yeah, doesn't matter what the role Doesn't is, just cast is. him. Just cast, yep, cast Nathan Fillion. Yeah, yeah I would. And then what is he after <laughs> Castle? Like, what happens to him? I, I stopped paying attention at that point, so I, I don't know. Like, where'd he go? I know he shows up. He was up. on the Santa Clarita Diet, that Netflix show oh, with Drew Barrymore and okay. Timothy Oliphant. Was he on multiple episodes, like a reoccurring? I don't remember. Honestly, what? I don't remember much about that show in general because it kind of wasn't worth keeping in my memory. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I remember he was in it yeah, a lot at the beginning, so yeah. Show. Well, James Gunn keeps him employed, you know, by having him show up in cameo appearances in his movies. He was in Mm -hmm. the one James Gunn right after this, did right after this, Super, which Mm -hmm. we also covered on this show. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? A long time ago. Um, But yeah, because he has like this kind of like uh, naturalistic screen presence or something. There's just something really easygoing about, Mm -hmm. you know, watching Nathan Fillion in a movie. And he's like got this kind of comedic timing and charisma. It's like. This guy should do more stuff. And yeah. it's like, is... He has like... He has like go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, he has like a Han Solo like charm about him. Very much, like, yeah. I always get like a Han Solo vibe from him. When I heard they were doing the young Han Solo movie, I was like, yeah. just cast Nathan Fillion as young Han He's Solo. He's too old for everything now. I, I know. You remember yeah. when they were going to make the Uncharted movie? They yeah. were Perfect. Yeah. Do it. Him. Oh, good. And then he's great. Like too but old this, now. Right. Yeah. But this is why they, they say cast him, because it's like, he would be good in that. Yeah. But he, I think he has an accessibility... Uh, He's got, like, leading man qualities, but he's not, like, leading man beautiful where you can't imagine yourself, like, as him. Yeah. Or, like, being friends with him and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I think the audience relates to him more. It's accessible. And he gets cast here as, like, a small town sheriff, uh, you know, where he it's just the... um, Can I have an alcohol, please? I think it's, like, a pretty decent part for him. You know, Bill Party or whatever. He's just Mm going... There's actually, like, a pretty cool special feature on uh, one of the the DVDs where he's just walking around trying to get into character by pointing at people and going, like, I'm Bill Party. I'm Bill Party. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But Rooker, right? Oh, yeah. Rooker had a uh, long career before this, starting off with Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Mm Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen this movie? Yeah, it's yeah. great. But it's like, a chilling it movie, yeah. Based on that movie, I kind of figured that Michael Rooker was one of these guys that you wouldn't ever want to actually meet or talk to in you know real life. <laughs> and then you see him in like his later comedy mm-hmm. stuff, and like the guy's a cut up, but yeah, you know. and apparently yeah. he's the best guy. He's ever. a convention favorite too. Oh, yeah. yeah, people love him. Mm-hmm. They love him, and he loves his fans. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the biggest parts that I think he has ever had, right? Is uh, I mean, I don't know. He was pretty big he's in pretty, Cliffhanger. Pretty, yeah, he was pretty uh, big. That's in, true. Well, I mean, like up till this point, or because yeah. Guardians Two, Guardians was is pretty, pretty big. big. Well, yeah. After, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he was on The Walking Dead, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. that going at this point in time? No, no, not until like no, no, 2011. No, no, no. Uh, 
the Kevin Smith movies. I know. His, yeah, I was gonna say he, was, up, he shows he up in a, there every now and again. Right. Sean, his top three on IMDb are the Two Guardians and then Cliffhanger. Just oh, so you know, so I first knew him from Tombstone. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. 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 Jesus, yeah, I haven't seen Tombstone in a while. Right? That's yeah. how I knew him. Shit. But this is a pretty big. Like this is what third lead. Second lead, main antagonist. Yes, of Slither. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where he gets to. Uh, I mean, I I can't tell if it's like every actor's dream or nightmare to be encased in, in shellac. Yeah. I felt bad for him. He was in watching like this. fifty pounds of prosthetics. Yeah, he had to be like Good. ridiculous. It's cool prosthetics though. That that yeah, the for grin sure that goes over half of his face. For sure. Sheep. I just kept cool thinking about if I had to pee and I was wearing that. Like, like what nightmare uh, that would be? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I think, except for certain parts, like they shoot this very well to kind of hide their actors and the prosthetics and everything. Because he's from like yeah. waist up, I would say. It almost feels like he would have the bottom half of himself free to mm -hmm. do stuff. Like yeah. a zip up little bean or something that something he's in. Like where he yeah, can just like go under it to get into it and his, then have all this, the rest of the stuff like fixed yeah, around it. Yeah, his him. actual prosthetics were like to the torso. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. From the waist down, there wasn't anything like constrictive, yeah. but still, that's pretty claustrophobic. That's, yeah, that's a lot of yeah. <laughs> especially like the amount of stuff that's just around his face yeah. and on his head alone Ugh. freaks me out. You yeah. know, well, the amount of weight just sitting on his head alone. He yeah. doesn't make up for like eight hours. Like, <laughs> Actually, crazy. now that you mentioned that the weight on his head, the like he's got these motorized tentacles, mm -hmm. like as a cap or something mm -hmm. on it. I mean, that had to be heavy as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like fifty pounds. Yeah. It's crazy. Like all, like up here, or you're all, saying the whole body the, thing, the whole thing, like, but like I said, it, it, it it's to like torso, mm -hmm. so the bulk of it is like shoulders, neck, head area. Mm -hmm. and for yeah. a lot of this stuff, like you'd probably be sitting on mm -hmm. something. What do you do after this? Like, you gotta go to a chiropractor every night or something. Like, you know, right? work, you're getting a compressed I'm sure spine. There's like yeah. someone to like, all right, we got you out of the makeup. Yeah, Just, here's a massage. <laughs> I'm sure they, they got to take care of their actors for I shit like that, right? So. Just like, all right, go get rubbed down. And yeah, you'd hope. Yeah. Jesus you'd hope. Yeah. He definitely could not turn his neck in that thing. Like, he no. could not move at all. Like, no. you know, it's like there's a couple close ups they have on his face where, like, I feel like you can almost see the weight of it on his face because he's kind of like, yeah. like trying to keep his eyes open underneath yeah. the weight of it, it looks like almost. I but. imagine the scenes where he's like tearing up. That's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it has right to be. The pain. Oh my God. Get <laughs> me out of this thing. And there's some shots where it looks like, because especially when he's walking through the field and everything, that I can feel like there's just three dudes at the bottom of him mm -hmm. turning him around. Yeah. He's supposed to turn around at that point. Like yeah. he's on something that just swivels. Mm hmm. For those close-up shots, have him mm -hmm. on like a lazy Susan. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a pretty effective makeup thing. I mean, I you know, it, I guess it calls to mind the thing, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a tentacle oh, yeah. monster. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. but it's one of that these makeups, thing. right? Yeah. yeah, which I suppose that's why you have a character named Jack McCready. Mm -hmm. in the, of course. Um, but it's one of these makeups that kind of uh, it, it goes in stages because he gets in, uh, infected. By this uh, this thing that falls out of the sky, a meteor, right? I don't know what you're talking about, Colin. It's a bee sting. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it's just a bee sting. <laughs> it's fine. The doctor gave me a prescription. Jeez, I'd, be like, I'd be like, no. No, there's something wrong with you. But it ends up, it's like a, it's almost like a nonverbal part, too. This is also, I think, the challenge of this thing. Like, once you're in all this crap, like you're not going to be talking for yeah. you know the no. last half of the movie, even though which you're is in why it. it's genius that hey, they have all the people talking for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know what else it felt like? Um, the fly. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I got, a, I got a heavy Cronenberg fly vibe mm -hmm. off of this. Oh yeah, uh, his James character. Gunn has said like he heavily referenced Cronenberg in this movie, like yeah. shivers for, and yeah. brood and very mm -hmm. much yeah for body, body horror. horror. Yeah, like yeah. this. There's only a few people you can you know mm -hmm. go yeah. to. Cronenberg's <laughs> he's the go to pretty much. He's the go to. Yeah. That's why it's like almost it's brilliant. It kind of digests all these other you know its influences, but it doesn't yeah. necessarily feel. I mean it. I mean, I suppose like the scene where I felt the, you know, that it was riffing on something the most was maybe the bathtub scene. You know, it's yeah, like, mm -hmm. I've seen this in A Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. or Arachnophobia mm -hmm. or it's a shivers. That's the other or, thing. Yeah. Like when they're in the house and everything's crawling towards her, I got a big arachnophobia vibe off mm -hmm. there. She's trying to escape. I'm like, oh, huh? he's seen all these yeah. movies. All these movies. Yeah. Like, yes. He is yeah. a fan, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of all the mm -hmm. movies that we love. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like if we all got together and we're like, 
I love all these movies. Mm-hmm. Let's make a movie. But that's what's brilliant about it when you can actually take all that stuff and distill it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and come up with like this new kind mm-hmm. of uh, thing. Yeah, because it still fe- it doesn't feel like a ripoff or anything. It still feels fresh. Yeah. You know, it mm-hmm. just, it, I mean, you can see these different parts. They're like an homage, but it doesn't feel like cheap. No, it, it's nice all. when you can see the influence, but yeah. not that they're ripping something off directly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The, um, Except for like Predator. You ripped that off. And the music? <laughs> the music yeah. from Fred. I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> but well, there's the shit like that that you're like, oh, I like that. That's cool. That's funny, yeah. Because they're, you know, they're gearing yeah. up and they're when getting ready to go out. The, the raiding the armory. Yeah. Mm. Where does this take place? Small town USA? No, yeah, but yeah. it's like in the Pacific Northwest or Wheelsy. something, right? Right? Isn't that the Wheelsy? name? Wheelsy? Yeah. That's what the sign said when they were coming into that's town. A fucking weird name yeah. for a town. Yeah. That's got to be, like, he's the influence. That's got to be an in joke or something. I think it's supposed to be like. Like southern Indiana or something, somewhere where like really? the, they have mountains. there was mountains. Yeah, there was some well, serious I know, mountain shots. Other accents. Those are southern accents. That's it, true. It might have been shot in Pacific Northwest. Well, actually, it was yeah. shot in Canada, but as everything is, as everything is. But mm. yeah, I know right, it's supposed to be the south. It's supposed said, to be like that's the, my favorite Coke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is that's a good joke. Yeah, this is supposed to be like right when it like that border where like Kentucky, where like Illinois meets Kentucky, it starts to get mm. southern, like mm. in that area. I love the uh, casting of the townspeople that we oh, see yeah. in this. So you said you had done some research about this. I mean, a little bit, yeah. A lot of it, I watched the commentary and read a few things, yeah. But they aren't actors? Well, like the um, the opening shot, the opening scene when they're going through the town and then they're just like focusing on the storefronts and the people. Pretty much all of those people are just townies. Please tell me the guy with no lips is a townie. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. guy? I want that I'm to sure a discovery is. in town. Yeah. It's like, Don't they mention you're going him? in the movie yeah. later? Like, you know, they're talking about some farmer, the one with the cleft lip. Yeah, him, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I, I don't know specifically if he is, but I know most of the people in that, in the, that shot driving through town, most of them are just townies. What well, do they look like? They want, he wanted to get that like real town feel. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. they don't have movie star faces. Like no, usually you see yeah. rough looking. Yeah. 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 It feels like, okay, we went somewhere and found, but they are in, as in, as a group of, you know, actors or, you know, whatever. They're in that opening shot where they drive down the, the main street. They're at the bar. Yeah. And they're the zombies at the end. Like, cause I've, I was watching and yep. some of them, I'm like, hey, I remember that guy. Yeah. I remember her. Yeah, you were square dancing <laughs> earlier. You yeah. Were line dancing anyway. Yeah. So those are like, yeah. I don't know. It gives the flavor of the movie mm-hmm. something that's yeah. like, okay, this isn't like picture perfect Hollywood stuff. But is it a, is it a jab at, uh, you know, like, I don't know, rural America? <laughs> I don't think and so. Deer like, hunting, yeah. when, when he was talking about <laughs> that, it, he, that kind of feels like a jab. It's like deer season. Yeah, they a little bit. The deer cheer. That's, the that, deer that's cheer. very excited for deer season to start. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? I'll never understand. I didn't buy want to pay so much. Just shoot a little deer in the face. <laughs> I did like that the main street of the town, too, didn't feel like a back lot. You know, like you can yeah. always tell a fucking yeah. like back lot, for, especially because so many of them use the same strip of street in so yeah. many movies. It all looks the same. This looked like a real small town. And it, it was. That was that's the great part. Like the they they even filmed a one portion um, and there was like a Hell's Angels rally going on across the street and they were like battling him for sound. <laughs> and Beautiful. the Hells Angels were like getting mad at him, like shooting guns in the air and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we like, should just let them do what they want. We'll be fine. We'll get the audio well, later. A, the scene, the scene. James Gunn was like, "We don't need sound in this scene. It's going to be redone later. So mm. who cares? Just go mm-hmm. for it." That's awesome. They should I know. have invited some of those guys over and give it even more of that, like, right. or at least like <laughs> set security, if nothing mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Well, even, I mean, it's like a, it's a working class movie where you, it takes place in, I guess, you know, Grant Grant's got like the biggest uh, house, right? Yeah. Because that's, that Grant set Grant. is going to be used. I mean, that's why I was like, as they're trucking through it, this is getting all technical on, you know, in the movies, but How like, as you? they were going through it at the beginning, I'm like, man, this is, this house has got like, you know, you can move cameras through here, like nothing. I'm like, oh, because it's going to be your centerpiece for mm-hmm. later on. But the rest of it's in, you know, like bars and trailer homes and whatever mm-hmm. and farm, farmlands and, and that. Um, so Grant, uh, he gets infected by this thing. So this is one of these like slugs that burrows its way into the back of your brain and then takes you over. And we know this through the mouth because they show it. 
Mm-hmm. Actually, it's something you always assumed in kind of like uh, like these parasite movies where you're like, oh, it's it's taken control of them. It's gotten into their brain somehow and taken control of them. this movie X rays in and shows you it climbing up through his system and psh, yeah. right yeah. into his brain. Yeah. Yeah. No it's questions. Like the, <laughs> no <laughs> questions on that. It's like, oh, this is what they do. Yeah. And then it has it carries this, gen- this genetic memory of where it uh, where it's from. So it's this organism that devours entire worlds it uh yeah, it would appear mm-hmm. so. much like the thing i suppose right it makes everything on that planet it and then it's just one consciousness and- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i just realized that the thing that crawls out of the meteor is still going like it shot rooker and then it just wandered off. That's what was in the post credit sequence. Oh, is that what's in the post credit yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. I was gonna say because I'm just like that thing's still alive. The cat, yeah. Then the post credit sequence that 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 like sack that the yeah that it came out of was like still hanging around, and the cat came up and sniffed it, and it's implied wow. that it attacked the cat. Yeah. So that that's the cat. other Can like we get an uh, alien cat movie. <laughs> Maybe Didn't I do the creeps on with the zombie cat? I'm sure it did. Oh yeah, wasn't there a black cat that like attacked a girl in the living room? I could be making this up. I think oh, it yeah, like she, that happened. She kept feeding it. Yeah. And then it got or was that a dog? There was a I thought it was there was a cat and like something flew out of its yeah. mouth. Maybe yeah. that was yeah. Maybe it was I don't cat. remember. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. I don't either. <laughs> um I liked it though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a good I'm movie. I'm surprised you weren't very upset with all the quote unquote dogs that died. Although they were they did just show kind of like fake dogs. Oh, that yeah. decapitated dog head was a little rough. Yeah. I was like, I don't need to see that. No, but I, I I did not handle it well the first time I saw it. <laughs> a whole room of dead animals. I had a little breakdown. Oh. But I've seen it a few times, so I was fine tonight. <laughs> Conditioning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you notice that Grant Grant had... Uh, so he's, he's gone and hung all of these carcasses up in his basement where he's nesting, right? Can we just talk about that the scene? Oh, my God. Making his nest. Uh, well, that shit's hilarious. He's one that's <laughs> tagged all these the different, like, these are coyotes or whatever. But, yeah, sorry. When he's <laughs> doing the leaves and everything. <laughs> he, like, so. burrows into the leaves. Mm-hmm. That shit's that's hilarious. so good. He dumps a bunch just... of leaves in his basement and, like, nestles down in them and rolls around him to, like, make a nest. <laughs> it's the this, funniest at shit at this ever. Point, oh he's God. still completely Michael Rooker. He's not changed at all, so he's just this grown-ass man burrowing down into some leaves. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's fucking wonderful. hilarious. And, like, Michael Rooker looks really intimidating in this movie because he's like a shaved head and he's really yeah. ripped and he's wearing like shirts that are kind of tight and he's got these like Dahmer glasses on yeah. and you know he, so he looks really intimidating but he's just like doing these really childish things it's yeah. so funny yeah oh, that's wonderful that's what you do with Rooker and that's what yeah. that's what makes him funny you're just yeah. like that guy doing just goofy shit just make him that's silly funny. it's just I think great. It's like if you don't then he does come across as intimidating right, he was yeah. on The Walking Dead and mm-hmm. he, yeah, yeah he can be terrifying if you don't make him do Silly things. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you make him do shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the best line of any movie in 2017. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't <laughs> think of one better, you like know. 10, yeah. It might be. It's pretty good. Um. Well, his diet consists of, you know, so he's eating just meat, right? Because this is what they do. Meat. His uh, <laughs> meat. biological imperative, once he's got this thing into him, is to reproduce, right? Mm. And so he's married to Starla, mm-hmm. and they seem to be going through like a sour patch in their relationship. Were they? Is that what was it happening? Would so, yeah. 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 That's what it sounds like. Yeah. So he wanders out in the middle of the night, I think, because uh, she, you know, rebukes him, whatever, and uh, like finds this other woman that he. Well, no, because this. Uh, I'm getting this out of order. Well, he goes to the bar. He goes to the bar. Yeah. But I guess the idea is that he he's finding uh, Brenda to put the alien slugs into because he has an opportunity to do this with Starla earlier, but because he loves her. Yeah. Like, and this is the thing. You got the, kind of got the impression earlier mm-hmm. that he's, like, angry at her, and I'm like, do they really, you know, are these people in love? Is this a marriage that's run out of gas? But he loves her enough to spare her, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know, impregnation by the alien being, right? Well, I think he even shows that even earlier than that when he first meets Brenda and they go out to the woods and he has the opportunity to cheat on Starla and he says he doesn't. He's yeah, like, no, he's she'll like, no. worry about me. And like in that moment, he's he's a creep. He's kind of a pig. But in the moment you see like he actually does love her. Like he does, he's not going to cheat on her. It's mm-hmm. so, like you get that that essence there but then later on you definitely see it i think the it seems like the alien is is understanding his his human emotion and there's something like intermingling there between him and the alien that's that's possessed him 
mm-hmm. which I think is kind of cool. Because at first he's just like, he's just like, meat, I'm going to kill. And then he looks at the picture, he sees her, he hears a song, and it's like the alien's understanding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that plays out later on when mm-hmm. they're like preparing her. And so. Here's the song. Meat. I'm not singing it. <laughs> it's air supply. Uh, yeah. I can't. I don't have that. Vocal I don't range. know it. Otherwise, I would. Yeah. Is it called Every Woman? Yeah, in the world? it is. Yeah. I saw the credits. Yeah, yeah. I was like, because I was like, is that really what that song's called? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> I don't have that range, Colin. Nope. All right. Well, just, you, know, you never know when a spontaneous freak show do what. You can't demand it, Colin. No, you can't. It's gonna happen naturally. Yeah. Right. I won't be able to forget that song for a couple of days now. I've Thank, already yeah, forgotten. Yeah. Well, uh, no. I thought it was going to be the other one, uh, the the non forgettable song at the bar. The I'm going to shine up my boots, <laughs> stroll. No, I was town. all for the I was all for the end song. Like I love you, but leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> that was, yeah. That's I'm just I like yes, that that's I a good song. song. Yep. I because love, who doesn't say just like I love you, but leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> that song is great. I fucking love the karaoke singer in the beginning. Oh yeah, she is committed <laughs> to the crying game. She is fucking committed to the crying game. Yeah, I love like, it. Oh, Jesus, oh, like, oh, oh. Yeah, and you know that's like. That's like Tuesday night karaoke. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just like, oh, you But people. the diviest of dive bars. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like she had a hard day at the bank and she, she's yeah. just getting it out, man. She got the crying out. game. I love it. But, uh, <laughs> Damn it, Deborah, you did it wrong again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she goes off just like singing the crying game. <laughs> <laughs> well, for yeah. some reason, that made me think of the other, the was it the fourth wheel in this movie? Greg Henry, the mayor, uh, Jack McCready. Oh, my God. I love him mm-hmm. so much. I want I wanted more. I wanted him till the end. I know. Why couldn't we have him till the end? This character is fantastic. So the first great. time he's we so see good. him, he's honking like mad at somebody in traffic. Then he's like, get the hell out of the way, you <laughs> motherfucking cocksucker. <laughs> and then this, you turn over and there's this uh, standing across the street is this woman and her kid aghast. And they're just kind of like, hi, Mayor. Hi, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hey, how you doing? He just gets that cheese ball politician smile. How you yep. doing? <laughs> He gets like the best lines in the movie. He may That's be my great. favorite character out of yeah, this entire thing. Yeah, he's my thing. favorite. He's yeah. just close to being like, vote Quimby. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> what kind of thing makes you want to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> you seen any fucked up shit like that? I haven't. I watch Animal Planet all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. So good. And yeah, it comes to an end. It's just like he should have, I felt like he should have had a funny end in this movie yeah. rather than just what he got. Oh, that was funny, wasn't it? Except we've seen that joke done too many times since then. Mm-hmm. You know, like, please kill me. And it's like, no, I can't kill you. You're my best friend. And it's drawn out. He's like, please kill me. And just Nathan Fillion blows his head off without, you know, because oh. he hates him so much. Yeah. Yeah, let's see, that wasn't, that wasn't funny to me. It's I, funnier if he, yeah. like, sticks around and he's just, like, still, like, he's infected but still wisecracking and, like, hating every minute of it and just mm-hmm. expressing it verbally. Mm-hmm. Like, that's funny if that keeps going. Like yeah, up till the very the bitter end. Like it, like guy. he's looking out at the other zombies. Like, have you ever been this fucking hungry? I ain't never been this fucking <laughs> yeah, hungry. Right, yeah. like that. <laughs> Holly and I would be remiss if we didn't mention that he was in Gilmore Girls. He was. There may be two actors from Gilmore Girls in this movie. Actually, we're pretty sure we saw Sean Gunn at some point in this movie. Which so. is standard. Yeah, he's not credited in this movie, but I'm, I'm sure pretty sure younger, we saw him. The younger deputy was he related? Was he a gun? No, no, not, okay. not no. as far as I can tell. Well, that's what I was just going to ask him. Like, all right, so do we have more actors from Gilmore Girls or Halloween Resurrection in this movie? Like, who wins? Halloween Resurrection, back? probably Halloween Resurrection. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> because there's, I mean, we know that Mitch Munchberger is in this, but we're not sure about Sean Gunn. Yeah, we just think we, we think, think we saw him, but yeah, but, but it's but uncredited. There was, yeah. there was a flash. I'm just like, mm, yeah, all right, because yeah. I thought I was seeing like the deputy again, but I'm like, no, that could be okay. Yeah. Well, I'd be so remiss maybe. if I didn't say that uh, Greg Henry's in one of my favorite movies, Body Double, where he mm-hmm. plays a very different part. But like his, I think he was in several Brian De Palma movies, uh, you know, back in the early 80s. But he's had like, I think James Gunn has had him in every, maybe not Guardians 2. No. But I, he's well, in. He's the, in the first, in the first one. one. He's Star-Lord's he's the, grandpa that's yeah. in the, the, the. Oh, that's right. Yeah, in the very oh, sad cold right. open to that oh, movie. God, that's yeah, the saddest uh, opening. And, yep. and he's in the Belco. Experiment. He's the voice. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. So mm-hmm. he's also in Scandal, I think. He would be. 
That sounds right. As a Donald that sounds Trump-esque right. character. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's this right in all, his wheelhouse. This is tangential. This is like on the peripheral that I know these things. Okay, <laughs> I know like, these I things. I don't actually watch. I know these things just because I know things. <laughs> that is ingr- uh-huh. That sounds exactly uh-huh. like his wheelhouse for acting. So right. I mean, yeah. you know, even if it's not true, it sounds like it could yeah, be. I you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> Scandal. I see through you, Sean. <laughs> Don't. Well, it was Charmed like, a couple weeks Tuesday ago. Night. Now it's Scandal. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll fess up to Charmed. I watched <laughs> the shit out of that show. Oh, if it was fucking Grey's Anatomy, Sean would be all over it. No, I gave up on that show seasons ago. <laughs> <laughs> they killed Derek, goddammit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Um I am comfortable with who I am. <laughs> Fuck all of you. <laughs> I'm not here to shame, just merely point it that's out. Right. Yeah, that's fine. The that's listeners fine. can draw their own conclusions. Right. I will just point it out. Yeah, that's right. Um so yeah, so uh once uh once well okay, Greg Henry. Once uh uh Grant Grant is infected and actually starts uh Exhibiting the you know the the disease or whatever mm-hmm. that's got a hold of him, uh, this is where the unrequited uh, relationship between um, Bill Party and Starla comes into the fore. So this is the thing, right? Even though, uh, like, we want the those two to get together, right? That's of the course. general gist of the movie. It's like uh, they feel like they should be together, and like, what is she doing with Grant? Grant? Yeah, right. Yeah, what are you doing with him? Yeah. What happened? I still we still don't know. Like, well, what? they they mentioned that in the beginning, she was she was orphaned. Both of her parents died, and she was like seventeen. And he comes along, and he's interested, and he's got a lot of money. And it was just kind of he could give her a better life than she'd have on her own. Okay, <laughs> but I like that the movie doesn't make it that simple emotionally for the characters. Yeah. Right? It's right. not like she wants to divorce the no. Guy. That's, I mean, that's the thing. I guess that's how you kind of read it. That initials, those initial scenes between them are kind of frosty, right? Where it's mm-hmm. like, okay, so clearly she's in a relationship she wants to get out of, but that doesn't, and I don't think necessarily seem to be the case as the movie goes along, which yeah. kind of gives it this extra level of uh, they love not each other tension, but yeah. interest. You know, it's like they're not behaving the way you would expect people in this type of movie to be. Like, okay, now that shit has hit the fan. This gives you the easy out, right? right? Yeah. She's like, actually committed. Like it's, she takes her marriage seriously. They're just mm-hmm. having some problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the movie's about, right? Yeah, That's just, just, a, just a problem. It's a problem in a marriage. It's, it's a big problem, but it's complicated. Well, once he starts growing tentacles and all that, it gets kind of uh, you know difficult. Like how do you how do you come back from that? The guy's out. You, you don't know. come back from being a squid, Colin. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking squid. Holly, are you just sure he doesn't have Lyme disease? <laughs> he just has Lyme disease. That's got to be it. <laughs> His arm was all bendy. <laughs> Lyme disease. <laughs> it's Fucking squids you put on your the hands board. And some feces. <laughs> then you you make Eat a sandwich. A sandwich. <laughs> But I'm telling you, that guy's great. Right. Oh, he's so, so great. good. <laughs> yeah, and the the squid stickers. The squid where, stickers is the best. When they're mapping it's out his like, location. It's, and I love when they just do shit. Like, it's ridiculous, but they just do it and just like, that's it. Yeah. Don't mention it. Don't point it out. Just do it. Mm-hmm. And wait, let your audience notice it. That's the best stuff. That's like, what makes it funny and not cheesy. Not yeah. just like poking at someone. Because I, I instantly picture that scene where Nathan Villeneuve is probably like, Shelby, can you go get us some squid stickers from the store? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, that shit's hilarious. No, I imagine more like, do we have any stickers I can put up? And she's like, oh, well, I got these. Do these mm-hmm. work? And she's mm-hmm. just like got them from something they had like she three just, years ago. She has like scrapbooking. She's yeah, got and squid it's just stickers. like, I got some squids right here. <laughs> We Shelby, just had him. Shelby is also like in this collective, the James Gunn collective, right? Was he was he married to her? Is that at this time yeah. they were. Yeah. Yeah. Jenna Fisher. Yeah, and they there were was, married at the time. There was another actress that was cast in this part, and she had some complication where she had to back. I think she got sick. She had to go to the hospital or something, but she had to back away from the part. And he called and Jennifer. No, Jenna Fisher was actually visiting. She happened to be visiting, and it was her birthday. And he was like, "Honey." Happy birthday. You get to be a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> what apparently, better she, role? apparently she'd always wanted to be in a zombie movie. And he's like, happy birthday, go. honey. Who better to play secretary <laughs> than Pam Beasley? I mean, <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah. Hey, Rob Basically Z- the same wardrobe. <laughs> hey, Rob Zombie, take note. That's how you cast your wife That's in a movie. That's how you cast your Thank wife. Thank you. 
Thank you. Not as yeah. not as Elizabeth Banks' character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and not as Elizabeth Banks' character without even auditioning anybody else, yeah. you know? Because yeah. I'm, sh- I'm assuming that's how Rob Zombie goes. He doesn't even audition because anybody. Because it's just easier to cast your wife. Yeah. You don't have to go through the audition process. Yeah. But is, is James Gunn God. still married to Jennifer? No, Jennifer? not anymore. No, 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 no. Oh, but no. if you cast your wife as the lead in your movies. <laughs> you're still married. <laughs> is that what you're It's because he loves Sherry Moon Zombie. No, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Oh, they, can, they can have each other. <laughs> yeah. <but>, uh, Gross. <laughs> Um, Jesus. Well, the the so this, <laughs> not that she's gross or anything. Yeah. Just, just that whole family is just the, the the the. I think what you're getting the at is the way zombies. they force their relationship onto us so much is yeah. annoying. Yes, yeah. 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 We don't need yeah. to see it all the time, Rob. Yeah, it's like the cinematic PDA. Yeah, exactly. Like, stop, stop it. Stop yeah. it. Does it reach its peak when you get the nice uh, gleaming shots of her ass all the time in in like, every uh, movie? In every, yeah. It's yeah. a nice ass, Rob, but, you know, I don't know. We, we get it. Yeah. I get it. We got it. it. It's weird, you know. <laughs> it's well, weird. just like I, I've said before, why do we need to see these movies? Why can't he just make them for himself? Why do? Why does the public need to see yeah. these movies, you know? Yeah. If that's your jam, do it, but the world doesn't need to see them. <laughs> James Gunn did it right. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then divorced her. Well, yeah. no. Unfortunately, they, seem, they both seem happy now. Mm-hmm. They're yeah, they're both happier uh, and probably better off. I would say. Well, what's happened to Brenda in this movie? The impregnated, unfortunate victim of uh, the alien thing. She's very hungry. She's so fucking hungry, so, Bill. So fucking hungry, Bill. <laughs> I can see why you would quote this so that's, very much. That's my so, like yearly Thanksgiving meme is like a screenshot of her like that <laughs> saying that and being like Happy Thanksgiving. That's my <laughs> that's my go to Thanksgiving meme. Can you hand me that little bit of possum? <laughs> what do you say? Oh, you're doing good. <laughs> you're doing such a good job. <laughs> Well, this is a visual that, like, I was just sitting there, you know, as I do. When you you're thinking, like, how did they come up with this idea? You know, it's like, okay, so somebody's going to get impregnated, you know, by an alien thing. I've seen this in other movies before. Mm-hmm. And I guess the idea is that somehow you're going to have a bunch of slugs in you. You're going to burst at some point and things are going to come out. But he makes a gigantic bowling ball yeah, out of it's this. the size person. of a barn. Yeah. It's like. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's like, like the what little the- girl from Willy Wonka, like, but times a thousand. Right. Yeah, yeah that's Huge. it. Right. Literally yeah, yeah. fills up an entire barn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just another effect where you're like, where is she in all of this that it's still, you know, just I was trying to figure that out. Like, she's, like she's got to have like her. Inside. Yeah, that's like probably what it is. Face forward. I was trying to figure Hands. out if she was standing or laying. That's what I was looking for. I would so say just laying. Like, just to be all. I wanted, I really did want. Like, we're trying I to like, figure it out, like guys. One sorry. Of those, like old fashioned racks. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I did want Oh, it might be because her hands are. Her hands are there. Like, are her hands in there? No, no, I don't think they are. Oh, no, they're off to the side. They're like, yeah, way they're off way off. That's yeah. what that's that was. What I wanted. Yeah. I wanted the little flapping hands, <laughs> Violet Beauregard shit, which is yeah. like. The way that skin was stretched made me uncomfortable, though. It like made me hurt. The uncomfortableness of the characters made me uncomfortable. Yeah, Yeah. it always felt like something was just about to shoot out of somebody's ass. Oh yeah, Rucker. Like I felt he was gonna shit (laughs) slugs at at most points because he's always got this. Isn't Dreamcatcher? I was gonna say Dreamcatcher style. Yeah, yeah, but it's he's always got like digestion problems when he runs out of the house and he's like doubled over. Yeah, he's like, like, yeah, I'm waiting for aliens to shoot out of his ass. (laughs) <laughs> dream, dream catcher has ruined yeah. you. Yeah. Shit yeah. weasels and whatnot. Yeah. The shit weasels. Shit weasels. Yeah. But exactly. also when she's in the barn and she keeps moving forward, I'm like, something's going to shoot out of her ass. Yeah. Yeah. This is just what they're going to do. I love that you watch this whole movie expecting that. It never yeah, happened. Like, I never got an alien shooting out of someone's ass. That's, <laughs> like, don't ask for much. That's why I didn't watch this movie before. Yeah, that's what, yeah. yeah. Like, they won't go that far. That was the reason. Right there. <laughs> Well, the movie graduates, I guess, in stages, right? And this is what I wonder for the person who's watching it the first time. Mm -hmm. Like, what is your expectation of what this movie is? Because it moves through the alien uh, infestation thing Mm -hmm. to the alien slug movie Mm -hmm. to the zombie Zombie movie, movie, right? Which is what I always like. I like the, the, the running around a town at night trying to avoid the shit that's going on element of this movie. Cause that that's the cool part. That's what I like of like the old zombie movies where they're just making their way through the town, ducking between houses and everything. And they can see the shit going on and like, Oh, they're dragging the bodies towards there. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Like trying to figure out everything that's going on. Like that element of this movie. I really liked, like, I'm glad they got to that point. Cause that's the fun stuff. I like that wandering around in a small town in the dark. Like, give me that movie, whatever you're doing within that. And I'm all for it. 
So I like those elements of it. But were you surprised as it graduated to these levels, or had this already been spoiled to you? No, no, no. I knew I didn't know anything that was going to happen in this movie. Awesome. For as long as this movie's been out, I didn't know. I knew everything I saw in the trailer. I knew. I knew she eventually she would turn into the huge ball with something. I didn't know she was going to give birth to the slugs, and I didn't know where it would end up or what was going to happen. But so all that got kept from me. So I was that was nice about watching this movie tonight. Were you yep. oversaturated with the bab- bathtub scene? Like, because that seemed to be the big marketing point for this movie. Like, the poster was the bathtub scene, the DVD cover was it, the trailer was the bathtub scene, and that's so insignificant to the rest. I was going to say, movie. well, that's what that's what I figured. I figured it wasn't going to be. I knew it existed, but watching it tonight, it wasn't like a big part of my memory of seeing anything before this movie. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, I know what happens, but mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it's going to be a huge thing. Right. They're just going to do the thing that they do with the bathtub scene, mm-hmm. which and is what everybody knows. The bathtub scene, scene like happens to, I mean, uh, what's her name? Katie? Kylie. Kylie? Kylie. Is like an inconsequential character, or mm-hmm. am I wrong? It's like this no, is she the totally one is. person, and maybe it's because she's not... The, the actress isn't recognizable. I don't yeah. believe I've ever seen her in anything before. So maybe, like, if you would have put a recognizable face in sure. that part, it would have had more of an impact. <laughs> but it, it's a, it's, I guess it's supposed to be fairly pivotal. She's just a girl in the town. She lives, you know, next door to where all the alien slugs are bursting out. She's in the bathtub, is attacked. She's the one who has the, you know, the, the psychic vision and can explain who mm-hmm. the creature is or what he wants. I don't even know if that's necessary in this to have like the origin, like it came from space and it conquered all these other. Do you really need that? Because it no. ultimately ends up being the alien and Grant have fused and they want Starla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what's actually going on in the movie. Right. I don't think you need it. I mean. And she's there in the end sequences, but it doesn't feel like she's actively participating. Really. The, only, the only thing he that did really- save her from the deer. <laughs> yes. I will say that. <laughs> So but I mean, she does. Yeah, as that she does kind of confirm that that the main like that he is the main monster. Because I mean, if if practical people are in this situation, they don't know if everyone's going to become like Michael Rooker or if it's just him that's going to be like this. She does confirm that he like the the Overlord or whatever is is centered in him. Well, she <laughs> confirms it, but Nathan Fillion like figures it out. Like, he just needs someone there to be like, because he could have gone with that thought and been like, it seems like this is what's happening. She's just there to be like, yes. Yeah. Which is not necessarily needed, I don't think. Yeah. He could just be like, I'm going to go on this theory, because I think in most other movies, that's what these characters do. True. They're just like, we can't confirm anything, so we're just going to go with this, because this right. is what it seems like. So, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think she's necessarily needed. Well, just it because, doesn't take away anything, I guess. And a lot of it, once the, uh, I guess, the wrinkle on the zombie movie, you know, what James Gunn puts on it, since he's already done a zombie movie with Dawn of the Dead, mm-hmm. uh, is the idea of the collective intelligence and the fact that all the zombies are Grant, yeah. you know, and so they're all, which is hilarious, right? I mean, this <laughs> yeah. is a comedic, uh, great. it's a great comedic idea, mm-hmm. you know, they all finish each other's sentences and just sound like they're drunk versions of Michael Rooker and give his character a voice, you know, for yeah. later in the mm-hmm. movie. But, you know, since he's, uh, you know, a verbal, you know, in that mm-hmm. regard, he is basically telling you all these plot points. The only thing that it seems like she's able to give us, you know, like that they wouldn't have figured out on their own <clears throat> is the spaceman origin yeah. backstory or whatever, that little sequence that she sees on the other planet or yeah. whatever. But and that doesn't bear into really. No, it's because almost- he said Grant says, like, I eventually I'll become everything like he's. It's like we we know this already because we got that right backstory. I'm almost surprised it's in this movie, considering that James Gunn seems to be such a big fan of these movies. It, it feels like he'd be able to to realize that you can just drop a meteor onto into this small town and then go from there. That you don't necessarily need an origin for what the monster wants to do, because we can see what it's doing. It's obviously taking over people. The little slugs come out and take over people and everything. We understand from the fact that they're all talking like uh, Grant, that they're all connected and he's all part of them. Like, you don't necessarily need to explain that he goes from planet to planet taking over because, like, we see that. How did Night of the Creeps do it? That's a good question. It was an experiment or something that got it away from the little aliens? Maybe I can't remember if somebody, one of the kids, like oh, has little, the, the little hills have eyes, Teletubbies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so there, like aliens in the, in the very beginning. Yeah. Yes, there was. Yeah, 
<clears throat> the jacked yeah. up Teletubbies. Yeah. yeah. That part that feels like a totally separate movie. Yes. Yeah. 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 I still want that movie. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe when his friend gets possessed, uh, you know, whatever the thing gets into him in the in the uh, bathroom, mm-hmm. and I think on the phone he may explain something about the memory that he's got. I can't remember, I remember. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you can do it like you know, like you need the bigger uh, backstory on the the creature. I don't know if it adds anything to the movie to tell yeah. you the truth or her character. You know, mm-hmm. I guess the other thing. Yeah, again. Uh, you- it's not necessarily needed, but it also it doesn't really take anything away. No, it doesn't mm-hmm. take anything away. Mm-hmm. It's just like okay, it's it's quick enough, you know. It's not like they spend a lot of time on it. It's just a quick flash. Mm-hmm. And her character is, I suppose, integral from for uh, saving Bill Party from the marauding animatronic. Uh, horror deer. Yes. That like pounds him in the face with his hooves. <laughs> that it's, felt like so Evil Dead 2 to me. Like yeah, I was like, yeah. this could be an Evil Dead 2, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really does. <laughs> it's yeah. funny though. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it when they actually have the gusto to do something yeah. like that. Like when yeah. you're so used to like, it's got to be CG or whatever. And in this, they get away with it, I, get, I think, by camouflaging the thing in. Dark shadow. Just dark. Yeah. It's so lots dark. Of fast yeah. cutting, but yeah. yeah, it's some guy with puppet, you know, deer legs, like right. punching Nathan Fillion in the face. I want to be that guy. Right? <laughs> How do I get that job? <laughs> and I think they get away uh, with it. Dreams of Hollywood. They can look at that stuff and be like, "Well, yeah, it looks like a dude punching him with little deer hooves," and it's just like, "That's part of the that's design. fine." That's because it matches the tone. I yeah. guess that's the yeah. thing. It's like you couldn't, maybe you couldn't do that in a more serious uh-huh. horror movie. Right, I don't think so. I mean, even if you weren't punching him in the face, right? That's like taking it up that level into comedy. Right. But if no, that would be like him grabbing him by the shirt, bringing him up, and then punching. Oh him in the face no! Him. Like that's too much. That's like oh, yeah, that's that's goofy. Then but he you, might as well have birds flying around his head. Yeah. He's got knocked out at that <laughs> point, tweet. you know? Yeah. But would that would that prosthetic have been acceptable in a straight horror movie? Nah, no, no. I'm just like oh, Not somebody fucked like, this up. <laughs> Not unless this movie was like 30 years older, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, this yeah. Is, I remember seeing, what was it, Black Roses, where a guy gets attacked by like this thing that looks like it's made out of pipe cleaner. I swear. <laughs> uh-huh. I think it's uh, the guy from uh, The Sopranos. He's fighting this yeah, Paul gigantic. Walnuts? I don't know. I don't remember his character. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, the things you could get away with. But mm. I mean, they get away with, I suppose there's a, a mixture between CG and um, practical effects mm-hmm. in this. How well did you think they did at blending the two? I was trying to think of where there was CG. Well, there's. CG. I mean, the yeah, slug like movements the, are some right. of them. Well, yeah, Rooker, the slugs, like Rooker is yeah. like when he's his distance, when like far away shots. No, look, when he's, he's like when he like, opens his shirt and oh, the yeah, stuff yeah. comes out of his stomach, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's yep. CG. Like, it, yeah. I think it blends well. I think yeah. there were real ones mixed in there. I think there yeah. are. There's one where it opened up and something came out, and yeah. I'm like, that's real. And then there was something where you know it was a distant shot and two things came out. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's obviously. No, there's definitely there's a mix. Yeah, especially when he's like coming up to the shower and they're just coming out that's real mm. and some other shots as well they do well missing him there um when it comes to like the big tentacles it's obviously cgi i was thinking so. like the little slugs especially like the, the slugs, bathroom yeah. scene right. like are, that was obviously cgi biggest, but they yeah. look fine but, uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're fine like, they're I'm space fine slugs yeah i mean yeah. i thought the part like after she hit it and it was like damaged but still trying to wiggle i thought the cgi there looked especially good yeah, yeah. like it's I movement so. yeah it's just like a big cow tongue yeah gross yeah. But yeah, you can definitely, it's just like, yeah, it's CGI. I wonder how much of the CGI stuff I'm attributing to the Foley artist, because I feel like the squish sounds and like the mm-hmm. like sounds were on point for a lot of, mm-hmm. you oh, know, God, that the, really helped. The sound that the little slugs made mm-hmm. when yeah. moved was this little squeak. It's mm-hmm. like, that's a genius idea, because <laughs> like you could characterize that thing with some kind of, you know, creepier, gloppier yeah. you know, mm-hmm. sound, uh-huh. but because it has this little innocent chirping squeak to it you know it's like Much oh like the chairs look at that little on. thing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, it sounds so innocuous but yeah. yeah oh but they'll turn you into a zombie oh but you're so cute they are kind of adorable mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> adorable little slugs I'm, I'm, slug I'm glad they went with that they went that route because so much of this movie is so disgusting 
Mm. It's like that little chirp just it helps. Yeah, yeah some yeah, like, like the, the way that everything is so slick and like glistening yeah. like really makes me sick to my stomach <laughs> a little bit. Especially when it gets in their mouths Slimy. and you're just like, Ugh. oh god, oh, no. yeah. And when they start like spitting venom, oh, oh god, <laughs> and it's so far and it's so acidy green, and I'm just, <laughs> just oh, and it, but also oh. it just looks like, it looks like the boogers from Ernest Scared Stupid. Yes, <laughs> oh <laughs> god, that's I know another, that's a very specific <laughs> reference, but that's another gross movie. That movie is nasty. Yeah. This is not That's another right movie with like glistening, gross creatures. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. Oh, God, it's it. brilliant. But it's also that stepping up of like you know we got to keep the intensity up. They yeah, mm-hmm. adding the spitter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and it's funny too because it's just like whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nathan Fillion <laughs> jumping around doing His like physical comedy. Yeah. That stuff. That's funny. It's great. Gold. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. They should put him in more movies like this. They should. Oh. I think they would. Uh, not to mention the. Um, the Mr. Pibb scene. <laughs> oh my god! Probably the most like memed gift oh quote of god. this whole movie. Uh, it's so fucking funny. He just funny. loses his shit. Like his stress levels built up so much that the oh, moment Greg, Greg Henry, Henry yeah, yeah, the moment he loses is because he doesn't have fucking Mr. Pibb. It's like Pibb extra it's, too. It's yeah, it's <laughs> Pibb extra. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I love it. <laughs> he's great. He's great. Uh, I'd say he's great. worth watching the movie by himself, but there's so much more around it that mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> um. Well, what else do we have before we wrap? We up? didn't mention uh, that there was a James Gunn cameo in the opening oh, yeah. of this movie as well. Like a professor at the yeah, a talking to Elizabeth Banks, mm-hmm. the school she works at. Does he show up in all of his movies? Um, I don't no, think so. He doesn't show up in either of the Guardians. I no, mean. not that I've noticed. No, and not that I've even heard mentioned that he no. shows up. No, he's in the. Um, he likes to put other. People he's in, in the, the music movies. video in the Gardens Two Extras. Yeah, there you go. Which is fantastic. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah. We didn't even mention the the grenade. Mm-hmm. Oh, that might be my. Oh, Chekhov's grenade. Chekhov's grenade. Chekhov's grenade. That is... might be my one problem with the end of this movie. You think so? Yeah. Here it I comes. I wanted uh, no. I wanted a bigger explosion. Like I wanted but levels like, the well, house kind no, of. No, no, no. I wanted no because we don't. We just get like bits and pieces of Rooker blowing up. I wanted like an outside shot of the windows getting blown out and everything. Yeah. You wanted, wanted a Joel big, Silver explosion. I, uh, bigger than what we got. I didn't want the whole <laughs> yeah. house to go up, but just like the lower level yeah. windows around where he was just <laughs> maybe some slime. Yeah. But I mean, it's a $15 million movie. You could probably yeah. do that. But before the actual explosion, I think it's hilarious that they bank so much of the story on this grenade mm-hmm. and then the fucking grenade just bounces into the pool. That's I love funny. it. That's yeah. funny. And that's, his look again. This is all yeah, sold on the reactions of Nathan funny. Fillion. Yeah. Just the. Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> like, could this day get any worse yeah. right now? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, he gets his version of "You got to be fucking kidding me." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree with you. The the final when they actually do have the explosion, I wanted a I bigger, wanted a bigger explosion. I wanted a bigger explosion. I wanted too. a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you guys feel like I felt grossed out for those actors that had to be like? Part, like the part people partially mm. absorbed yeah. by Rooker, mm-hmm. uh, naked, like covered naked, in gelatinous goo, yeah. and pressed uh, into some kind of plastic, yelling at people. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, how many hours were they doing yeah, that? And these yeah. fucking people, they had to stay there. Like they would, t- they would cut and they would take you know little breaks or whatever. And those people had to stay there. Yeah, yeah. and unless oh, and it's like they shot in Canada, right? They, yeah, they said it was very. cold. It's cold in Canada. Yeah. It was That's got to be cold. fucking and being covered in that gelatinous stuff, which gets really cold if you're on set and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it best a PA brings you like a bottle of water and a granola bar right. and you're just and, like chilling there right. you know all day. I don't know, yeah. you, I don't know if you can blanket these people without having to reapply tons of goop. Right. Yeah. Oh god. Oh, no. It's no just way. like a week of hard work at most and then you reap the rewards for eternity. It's a, an Yes, unfilmed. for being uncredited. <laughs> for being uncredited. <laughs> yeah. <filler>. yeah. <sighs> have you ever worn prosthetics? How cold were we on Witchfinder? Come on. <laughs> that was like in the 50s. That was that all right. Was cool. that, we weren't blowing, you know, you couldn't see our breath. Or you can and with these folks when they're yeah. outside. Pros- but again, they're probably on a heated stage for the interior stuff. Oh, you would hope so. Dude, I prosthetics so. are them. fucking miserable. Yeah. They're and they were miserable. not sitting in comfortable positions, some of those no, people. Yeah. Like, the way they were, like, absorbed into him. Like, no, they were like human tentacles. <sighs> yep. Brilliant yeah. stuff. I love it. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. uh, I felt bad for them. I was like, yeah, I did poor too. actors. And even um, um, Elizabeth Banks, when they were filming, they would do all these takes and everything, and they wouldn't. No one would ever clean the floor, so this gunk would just like build up and build up on the floor. Ew. And she's walking around in this cold, barefoot, like just goo all the time. Ew. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Like I get, I get 
Yeah. And she's That's, never dressed warmly in this movie. No. Ever. She's wearing a little nightgown. Yeah. No. Ugh. At the warmest she gets is that leather jacket she has on for like two seconds. Yeah. yeah you know? I think yeah. the, the most I felt for her was I think they were outside at the, the deer cheer, the bar. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she's wearing some kind of uh, dress that's you know pulled down past yeah. her shoulders, mm-hmm. but you can see her breath. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, it's fucking cold out. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they said that uh, scene. It's like below, and everyone's wearing parkas, and she's just being a trooper, mm-hmm. wearing like a sleeveless dress. Yep, mm-hmm. almost like Banks seems like a trooper. She does mm-hmm. seem like a trooper. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. seems really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like her. She's one of those people that you'd like to get to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like Actually, cool. everybody in this movie, though, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing it has going for it. I follow it's like, pretty much every person in this movie on Instagram, and they're all fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love them. I even like the uh, his, his uh, well, I guess, deputy, like his partner mm-hmm. he's sitting in the car oh, with. yeah. Like, even, I like that guy. Yeah. yeah. He's cool, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good people. Mm-hmm. Well, we probably shouldn't tip our hat completely. I fucking hated this movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happens, folks. I don't know if this is your first time to the show. What we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna read some of your mail, and then we're gonna come back, and we're going to each one of us will give you our final thoughts. We'll review the movie, what we actually thought about it, and sometimes these are shocking, shocking because. You hear things like, oh, it sounds pretty positive right now. And then all of a sudden, like, somebody's telling you and explaining in great vivid detail why they hated this movie. It's happened. It's happened. It has happened. Yeah. So uh, stick with us. You're going to find out how that's going to go. We're going to keep you in suspense for a little bit. But first. Holly, you hated this movie. I fucking hate this movie. It, it would not be the here. first time that somebody this is your who brought of the movie <laughs> hated their own movie. I mean, that happens, right, Sean? That happens. Yeah. So I, I think we most all, of the time don't like my movie. I think we've all brought movies that we didn't. like. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So first of all, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. So Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. He brought Pip Extra for all of us. That was so nice of him. Thank you, Igor. He knows what kind of Coke we like. I don't like Pip. Don't tell him that. You're doing a good job. He's trying his best, okay? You're doing a really good job. Uh, So... Okay, well, the uh, so how you can get your mail to Igor so he can bring it to us. Yeah, you're not you sending can, it to us. You're sending it to Igor. To Igor, like, he yeah. He screens all this shit I mean, for he kind of lives for this. Yeah. So. If, it's the only you, job he you has. You know what? If you want to send mail to Igor, that's fine. That's fine. Never yeah. Had, yeah. We haven't actually had Igor fan mail. Yeah. If you're a oh, fan shit. of Igor, tell him he needs the boost. He course, needs the yeah, confidence he's boost. He's feeling unloved over there. Yeah, he's so. on the edge. He mm-hmm. needs a little encouragement. So let's talk him down. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, we can just like sew him back together after whatever he does. Well, why don't we tell the good folks at home how they can get a hold of Igor on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at, <laughs> Igor at Saturday Igor. Night Freak <laughs> Show. We should. We should give him his own uh, Facebook profile and, and everything. Uh, okay, so Jimbo Ice writes in. <clears throat> Jimbo. 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 And he says, hey, I really enjoy your podcast. It's a lot of fun to check out past episodes on TuneIn to see how you've evolved over time. Your current lineup seems to have a solid chemistry, and you all seem to get along and play off each other well. Very nice work. Any chance a viewer request episode in the future? I've been dying to hear podcast tackle Possession from 1981. Thanks, Jimbo. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thanks, Jimbo. it. And dreams do come true. We like so people stay, who like stay us. Stay tuned. Listener mail was dangerous last year. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, just so we don't get a complete, you know, full head of steam going, the best ever writes in <laughs> and says, well, "Are you stop eating? Go ninety minutes without eating." I ate for one episode out of. We usually don't eat. I usually yeah. don't eat. I think it was one episode and you were eating, but I think you got called out like twice. Uh, yeah, I was hungry <laughs> that episode. I can't. Most of the time, we do not eat anything. Yeah. That's right, listener. Yeah. That was a fluke. If you can identify the episode, you get five. If bonus you can identify points. the episode, the circumstances in which I was eating. <laughs> yeah. Snacks were brought. All right. Yeah. You know what? Myself. We recorded two episodes that night. We needed snacks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? That was a double. Very true. So you're welcome. 
Uh, David 5.0 writes, and it says, as someone who absolutely hates horror movies, but oh. at the same time is curious about what goes on in them, this podcast is great to listen to. Wow. I find myself liking this show more and more as I drive long hours as a truck driver and listen to all the hosts carry on about the different movies they bring. Everyone is so lovely, and they all bring different perspectives to each movie, and it's always surprising at the end to hear who loves and hates what. Keep up the good work. Wow. Oh, Colin, that almost sounds like you could have I written it. it. <laughs> Just because I read it. I don't know David 5.0, but no. thank you for thank listening. Thank you so much. David, I hope oh. you, David, I hope you listen to our Over the Top episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, please, yeah. Oh, oh one. yes, please, please listen yeah, to it. Like, honestly, you'll enjoy the whole summer of Send canon, of but Over the Top. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> uh, about that's tonight's uh, that's, I think that's our core audience, <laughs> oh, right. is the truck driving I'm fine with it. Yeah, commuting. Like the commuting long hours people. People who work from their cars. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. <laughs> awesome. That's I love that comment. That's great. Uh, about our episode Slither, Jill Calvania writes in. Hi, Jill. She says, I love this movie. This is the movie that always reminds me of one of my fa- other favorites, Night of the Creeps. Yeah, yep. Uh, for sure. Yep. Uh, Cherith Cute Story writes oh in. Oh, my God. Says, that's an Arrested Development joke. <laughs> oh my god you no that's my favorite listener right now that's amazing you're the best i caught it good job there you go maggie well, Lizer acknowledges that <laughs> cherith says that slither is one of my faves so there you go for sure man uh rushmore 309 says it's a very fun horror movie throwback with great practical effects and gore yes. you can't go wrong with a cast that includes philly and rooker and jenna fisher mm-hmm. absolutely yep. absolutely yep. Jacob Kotner writes in and says, this is my wife's favorite movie. I think it's great and all, but not something I would watch as many times as she has. All it really does is get that damn song in my head. You know the song I'm talking about. I think if I think too hard about it, I'll get it in my head again. And there goes my day. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. This is movie it, will I do love that. you, but leave me the fuck alone. I hope it is. <laughs> I have a feeling it's air supply. Probably. <laughs> And uh, final comment tonight is from our episode on Urban Legend. Ah. Uh, the Vintage Shack writes in and said, Rebecca Gayhart managed to look pretty even in her crazy state. She's very crazy. Yeah, she had amazing hair. She's good looking crazy. Her hair. Yeah. Oh, God. I crazy love hair. Her. She's yeah. good looking crazy. Good looking yeah. crazy. She's there got good go. crazy That's eyes. what they were yeah. going for yeah. in that movie, for sure. Indeed. Uh, so that brings us to the moment you've all been waiting for, the final wrap-ups. Where Colin! You're find out. <laughs> Yes, Sean. <laughs> what did you think of Slither? Um, well, I had uh, I the premise of the movie, you know, like instantly was one of those things where you know you've guaranteed my ass in a seat, you know, <laughs> to see this because this is my jam, right? Uh, alien space monsters take over a town. I don't think I've ever heard you use that phrase. This is my, <laughs> yeah, this is my jam. He'll my bust jam. out a phrase that is very uncommon. Like I every say now that. And again. I don't think I've ever yeah. heard you say that. I say that pretty frequently as well. Yeah. I'm a man of the world. So, uh, <laughs> tentacle monsters, you know, this cast, I was a big fan of, uh, I think it was following both primarily Rooker and Nathan Fillion into this movie. Got bonus, uh, you know, Greg Henry. And um, Elizabeth Banks. So, you know, it's like it has a perfect storm of the writing is really clever. The direction, I think, is really good. The cast is uniformly likable. The story, I mean, is one of those things. The um, it's like it's a it's a really like sweet natured kind of horror movie. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, even at the end of it, you feel for poor old Grant Grant. I mean, even though he's, he basically died when he got that thing in him. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's the gist that you're supposed to have why you can justify that it's okay to blow him up at the end. I mean, you know, he's got this thing. He's going to take over the world. Right. But we're still, not bringing him back is, from He this. still is killing people. And <clears throat> yeah. <over laughs> we can't and bring him, him into zombies. He's murdering the better half of a town. Yeah. But he just wants to be with the woman that he loves. He's lonely. Yeah. He's lonely. He's lonely. Um, which makes it all duplicitous. She stabs him in the. No, I'm kidding. No. She. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? It makes, it makes me wonder why they didn't use that other air supply song. That I'm all out of luck. I'm so lost in that. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 that yeah, seems yeah, more yeah, fitting. Yeah. Why is it not just wall to wall air supply? You know, <laughs> it, like, should be. Well be. it should be. Well, Colin, I would no. stab the hell out of you. There's if you only so just much saying. air supply we can take. <laughs> hey, this movie and had a 15 you, million Sean. dollar oh. budget. They could have bought all the air supply they wanted. Probably could have bought air supply. But then they sacrifice these fantastic. 
makeup effects where I keep bemoaning that movies now have opportunities to do uh, practical effects and do 100% CG, you know, uh, stuff, which I don't like as much. This We're one, it's like at you, the thing, the thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Unfinished this is, CGI sorry, the, in that one too. The 2011, the thing for those mm-hmm. of you who are, are, are unaware, but um, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> that's right. You're hardcore fans. Hardcore fan. You know all this you stuff. Know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, to have, and I think that this is, you know, again, I keep bringing this up in every practical effects movie, but I think this is an art form that is in danger of disappearing, right? Because yeah. the people who used to do it when in its heyday, I mean, they're getting old, you know, and like time's moving on. You're going to forget how they pulled some of this shit off, you know? And so it's cool to see, you know, I don't even know who the company is who did the special effects on this. I don't know who the makeup effects guy is. I know. Is. How do we, that's, that's, <laughs> right. kind of, that's on us. We should yeah. know. We should know. That's but, my bad. I didn't take that note. No, we should. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think they did a fantastic job, and it's just great to see this. This is the kind of movie that I like. It is uh, what I call fun horror, right? Where it reminds me of movies like Return of the Living Dead or Reanimator or something like that. You know, they don't take themselves too seriously, and... They're horror movies. I mean, I guess they are. You would classify this as a horror movie. Yeah, absolutely. Up front, right? It's pretty. It's not yeah. like it's got scary, zombies. People really. getting things it's, shoved down their throats. It's yeah. pretty gory. There's yeah. Slime spitting. There's yeah. people's faces melting. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I can't that say. That dude gets cut in half and all his guts yeah. fall out. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I'm like, when I was watching it, I'm like, gory. when they did that in Scream, you couldn't show. Well, probably because Scream's more intense That's than intense. realistic. This is yeah. more like. Yeah. It's for a like joke, he's, technically. He stops yeah, and looks yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. He stops and looks around first and then yeah. just falls open. This is no yeah. kid is going to try doing that. No. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah no kid <laughs> is going to try getting infected by an alien, turning halfway into it with tentacles, and then trying to split a guy in half. Right. Nobody yeah. will yeah. try that. Yeah. Guaranteed. Um, but yeah, I think for all of its, I, I mean, I walked out of it thinking that it was fantastic, and now you know, um, you know, Scream Factory's put out the collector's edition. You should go get it. There's another plug for, for Scream Factory. Come on, Scream um, Factory. And the co- the cover art on this on the Scream Factory is fantastic. They always kill it with their cover art. I will say that. I think this is bar none a new classic. This is one of my favorite top ten horror movies of the 2000s. That decade, maybe even beyond that. I don't know. We, we're still making our way through the 2010s, <laughs> the teens, the aught tens. Yeah, but I mean, I would say that this is one of the best uh, horror movies of you know of that decade for sure. I mean, it's up there, and uh, you know, I think uh, it. You know, just from listening to what Sean was saying earlier, or sorry, Michaela, when she went to see it and hated it, it's like I, I had this same experience similar when I tried to get somebody to watch Cabin in the Woods the first time. Mm-hmm. So this is, you know, a great horror movie. And they said the comedic part of that, they were unprepared for it and they just fucking hated it. You know, you mm-hmm. hate it the first time you see it like, yeah, but this is, you know, if you know what to expect, maybe, you know, you'll like it. I guess maybe I knew that James Gunn had a comedic background or something going into this movie. Did I, you? I don't know. No, I guess there's I no have. way you would have known that. But I, when I sat down to the, see this movie and just like uh, right out of the gate, the way that the opening credits happen, I'm like, this is announcing a tone. Yeah. They're like, okay, I got it. Like I, right then, I'm like, I know what this movie is going to be. I think it's because you are, you're so familiar that you're able to recognize something like that up front where Maybe. typical moviegoers probably aren't prepared to recognize that kind of thing. It's rare that you go and you sit down in a movie theater and talking directly to you. This was one of those movies. So, uh, I'm going to pass it along to Sean, but I'm going to say, yeah, you got to check it out. It's, it's awesome. It's great. It's fantastic. Sean. Uh, I think my fear um, for this movie was just by looking at stuff early on was like, I didn't want to go into a movie that was just going to be goofy and stupid. Like, I didn't want a stupid movie, but um I'm happy to say that I went in this movie, and this is just what a f- it's a fun movie, it's a really fun movie. But not only that, like it's I think it's written by smart people, yeah, which helps. I mean, it helps any movie, but it helps this a lot. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, there's so much good stuff about this movie. The cast is great. I like all these people. Um, the effects are, um, I mean, there's some CGI in there that like, obviously you can see the CGI, but they do a lot of practical effects, which I'm all for. Like, give me the practical mm-hmm. stuff. It makes it more, it, it does a lot for me because it just makes it more real. Um, the script is very good. Um, I want to watch it again just cause some of the stuff in this is so quick, especially by Nathan Fillion. Like when they're, uh, looking at the squid 
uh, yeah. stickers, and his he's just like, I'm sure. He's like, I'm sure your mom wasn't too proud when you came out, son. And then he just keeps like it's going. It's so on. fast, you will you miss yeah. it. Yeah, some of the stuff is so fast, sure. and this is just fun. Um, but uh, I mean, I like the story. I like the things it's referencing. Um, I mean, any movie that puts Predator music in it for a gearing up scene <laughs> is all right by me. Um, and yeah, everything's really good in this movie. It's a fun movie. I want to watch it again. Um, I definitely recommend it. I give it uh, four boxed lunches out of five. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was a total victim of the marketing of this movie. I saw the trailer. I felt like nonstop. And I just remember the bathtub scene with all these like creatures going in and just being like, all right, whatever. But like body horror has not been a thing since like the 80s. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. It's not really something we care about anymore. Um and so once I finally got around to seeing the movie, which was not in theaters, it was long after its DVD release, it was one of those things, like, you ever put it on, like, a movie, and you watch it when you're in bed, and then, like, the whole night, you're either hearing the menu or the movie loop over and over again? <laughs> this yeah. was my first experience of this movie, so not only did I hate it, but, like, I heard it nonstop the whole night, and I was like, fuck this movie, like, I'm smarter than this movie thinks I am, like, I thought this movie was insulting my intelligence the first time I saw it. Then, you know, years later... Um, the guy I'm currently dating was like, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. He's like, you have to watch it. I was like, well, I've seen it, but I just don't really like it. And I was like, why? I was like, that movie's fucking stupid. You know? So we sat down and we watched it and I feel like it's all about your expectations going into this movie is how you're going to receive it. And because like I was set up so horribly with the wrong expectations because of the marketing of this movie, that's why I hated it. Cause I love horror comedies. Cabin in the woods is one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. You know, I I think that movie is, I love its wit and I love it, the way it tackles tropes and I feel like I, those are the same things I love about this movie James Gunn also has a way of humanizing Michael Rooker in a way that is like unparalleled like I can't think of another role he's been in where he is like he can be an intimidating person but he can also be brought down to like a more sensitive level than that mm-hmm. like I'm even thinking about like Guardians and other things he's been in like even if it's just as simple as giving his character something like childish to care about like in guardians how he likes the troll dolls and stuff you know it's like little things like that that humanize that guy and so for a director to take like a really specific type of character actor and like be able to make him into all these different things i think is a really good pairing that you don't see Mm -hmm. very often anymore and you know the practical effects in this movie are great the cast is great they all have really great chemistry with each other it's really well written and as sean was saying earlier like it's funny but it doesn't point out its humor to you it lets you like kind of just it just expects you to keep up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's the right way to go about it. And I think that's why James Gunn's writing has persisted as long as he has and how, why he's been as successful as he has yeah. is because his humor isn't like, like it's no CBS like sitcom waiting for the laugh track kind of humor, you know, like it's not that dumb. Right. So yeah. I think that's why it works and why it endures over time and why I think he will continue to be successful. So I definitely think you have to check this out. Um, just just, you know, if you if you have any sort of memory of like when it was originally released, just put that out of your mind mm-hmm. and just go into it That's knowing as little idea. as possible. Just go into it knowing nothing. But it, it you you have to watch it. It's incredible. <laughs> just know that this movie loves you. Yeah, it it does. Yeah. <laughs> this movie just want this movie just wants to love you. Yeah, it really like, wants I, to love you. I also love the things yeah. that you love. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Holly, what'd you think? It's true. This movie is a love letter. Mm-hmm. Like it really it's a, it's a love letter to old school horror and to fans of horror and I just it's it's so expressive. James Gunn is so wonderful at at being expressive with his characters and with tone. He's he's wonderful. And I I completely agree with everything you guys have said. Michael Rooker is fucking fantastic. James Gunn has this amazing ability to give characters layers that are just unparalleled. And I love every single person in this movie. There's so many characters that you don't expect to have such a love for. Like like you said, the sheriff that, that was just in the car with him, like that guy, you don't expect to love him. But there's moments where you're just like, he's fucking hilarious. Yeah, he's a good like guy. When, he's funny. When he gets up and starts I'm talking. I'm surprised you can lift that beer you've been carrying that torch for so long. <laughs> right? Yeah. Everybody gets a sick burn in this movie at least once, oh, and it's God, awesome. It's so great. Just the little details. Like I said earlier, the karaoke singer just giving it her all at the crying game. When I first saw that, I died. It just something about her just struck me, and it was so funny. 
I you, I <laughs> you know mean, she's just like crying on stage. She's just like, <laughs> she's so just like giving it her all. Yeah. Like that is her song. It and, speaks to uh, her. It's the fucking crying game. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I mean, you guys know that my my jam is horror comedy. I, I love it, and this movie is just perfection. It it hits all the points that horror should hit, but it hits all the moments that comedy just fills my heart with joy. It just, Oh, it's so great. The practical effects are fantastic. I mean, we, we talked about practical effects, how important they are when we watched uh, dead alive. And I, I think it has a very similar uh, comedic gore to it that dead alive had. And it just works for me. It's so much fun. This movie is so much fun to watch. It's so enjoyable. I I'm so sad that it didn't do well. Like I wasn't really familiar with it when it came out. I watched it much later. Um, so I didn't have an expectation really. And I think that's why I fell in love with it so quickly. Um, so I, I agree with what, what Michaela was saying. If you saw it and you didn't like it, just go into it with a new state of mind. Just put out everything that you thought of it before go into it fresh because it really is enjoyable. Um, I think, I, I don't think anyone would be really disappointed if you like horror I think it's great. Horror comedy. You're really going to love it. I definitely recommend it for sure. It's awesome. Well, that's four ecstatic reviews. Ecstatic? Yeah. Four yeah. positive yeah. reviews. Enthusiastic. Okay. Yeah. Enthusiastic. Yeah. Enthusiastic right. reviews. Four we slither. So. like it. There you go. So you got to check it out on the Freak Show. Freak Show recommends. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Michaela. I- Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> what are Point. we gonna watch? We're gonna watch week? Scream Four. Scream Four. Whoa. Scream Four. Why are you doing this I've, to us? I've no, got some issues I need to work out. So right. this is gonna be a therapy. It's gonna be a therapy session. <laughs> Sean's head. He's face planted. Sean, you face love planted. Scream. <laughs> yeah, I love Scream. That's why I hate Scream Four. Oh, hey, 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 now, hey. That's tipping, Don't spoil the, tipping next episode, oh, no, Sean. Right. Hey, that's oh no, we're gonna talk about some shit now. Michaela <laughs> yeah. knows she's going into a combative, hostile yeah, no, environment. I, I, How does that? I have. Oh, I need to lay down on the couch. <laughs> we're in a fight. No, no, no. We are in a fight. Hey, what? this is a scream four. Is not the hill I'm gonna die on. Okay, it's not the hill. Sean I'm gonna... is already announcing his beef. He's yeah, Babe wow. Ruth calling it. Hey, wow. you brought resurrection, beef. okay? Yeah, you brought yeah, resurrection. I did. And Colin had so much fun with that movie. <laughs> Maybe it'll happen with. Sc- I haven't seen Scream Four since the theater, so so now's go. a good time to revisit that's it. Right. No, I am super excited to watch this movie next week. All right. <laughs> so that's Fun. next week on the Saturday.